So we've seen that Slack is prevalent on the labor market, takes the form of um, unemployed workers, but Slack is also prevalent on the product market. And there it takes the form of um, idle labor and idle capital. That is um, labor and capital that would be ready um, to provide um, services um, to consumers um, or to produce goods, but that, that are just not used because uh, no de demand has uh, manifested itself. Um, and that's a, a concept that's less common. It's something that we don't talk about um, very much in standard macro courses, but that's something that if you think about it for um, five minutes, you realize is actually very prevalent. So what's an example of um, idle labor? Well, these are things that we see uh, every day. So let me show you um, an example of how it may look like. All right. So here are just um, two simple pictures um, that illustrate what I have in mind. Um, so you can see um, here um, on the left hand side, we have just a restaurant We have a restaurant worker, and we can see that uh, this waiter is ready to work, is ready to provide services to customers, but there are no customers. So he's just idle um, and he's just waiting for a um, customer to arrive. So here you can see that um, this is a worker that's employed, uh, but nevertheless, he's not producing any services because no consumers has uh, manifested um, itself. Here we have another example. On the right, this is an idle uh, barber. And again, this barber is at work, he's ready um, to provide um, services, haircuts, but no uh, consumers has showed up at the door, and so he's not um, doing anything. Um, and just as a side note, that's why actually idleness will be an explanation for fluctuations in productivity. You know, if you look at productivity data, it looks like workers are more productive in good times and in bad times. But of course, you know, if there is idleness and if workers are more idle in bad times and in good times, then necessarily when you measure productivity, that is you measure the amount of services produced by a given worker, it will look like the worker is more productive in good times and in bad times, which is just because more consumers, more customers came in good times and bad times and he could sell them services. He could sell, therefore, more services in good times and bad times. Although the actual technology, the actual underlying productivity is exactly the same. Um, so anyway, these are just two uh, pictures to illustrate what I have in mind when we talk about idle labor. These are workers that are employed but are not providing any services because there are no customers. Um, but then the question is, you know, how big of an issue is this? If we look at the entire economy, how much idleness is this? And because idleness or slack is not part of standard model, it's not something that's well measured. And it's not something that the government uh, keeps track of, um, unlike unemployment. Um, so that's a bit of an issue. But nevertheless, we do have data on that. Uh, and so these data are going to come from um, a really um, a good source, um, the Institute for um, Supply Management, or ISM. Now, the Institute for Supply Management, uh, it's a you know, a professional organization. Um, they have a lot of uh, members that are actual firms. Uh, and, uh, and these guys, they keep track of production and supply conditions in the US. Uh, and you can have a look at their website. They have a host of very interesting reports that they produce uh, and a lot of very interesting data on the state of um, the US economy and the, you know, production and um, the supply infrastructure. And in particular, what they keep track of is something that they called um, the operating rate, both for manufacturing industries and non-manufacturing industries. Uh, 
and the operating rate um, is indicating the actual production level of firms, so how much they're actually producing and selling, as a fraction of the maximum production level that these firms could have given their current capital and their current labor. Okay, so it's given how much capital they have, given how many workers they have today, how much more could they uh, produce? And that's the operating rate. Okay? And then from this operating rate, what we can create is a rate of idleness. And the rate of idleness is just one minus the operating rate. So the rate of idleness is as a fraction of the total capacity of a firm given capital and labor, how much is not produced or not sold because there are just no customers. So from the operating rate, you can, rate, you can create an idleness rate, which, which is just 1 minus the operating rate. Um, and so if you want this idleness rate, It's the share of um, productive capacity that's idle. And the share of productive capacity, um, productive capacity, you know, taking current capital and current labor uh, as fixed, okay? And, um, and so they produce this idleness, idleness rate for manufacturing firms, non-manufacturing firms, and here is how it looks like. Um, in the US, um, so the source of this graph, um, if you're interested, uh, that's from some work that I've done with um, Emmanuel Saez, and 2015 paper that we have uh, in which we've collected all this um, operating rate uh, produced by the ASM and, and then put them all together and that uh, allowed us to create this uh, series. Um, and so what you can see, so a bunch of things are here on this graph. So this is for the US uh, again. Uh, so this is for the United States, and uh, that covers the 1990s to uh, 2013 or 14. This is just uh, the data that we had. That's when they um, started to, com to compute this rate. And so you have um, three things here. So uh, the uh, black line that you have uh, is going to uh, tell you what's uh, happening in the manufacturing sector okay and so let's uh, let's look at it for a little while so what we can see is that the rate of idleness in manufacturing uh, it's always above 10 percent it's in normal time it's between 10 and 20 percent so it means that given capital and labor firms could produce you know 10 or 20 percent more than what they uh, do produce if they had the demand for it. If customers showed up and asked for their product, they could produce 10 to 20 percent more. So it's exactly a measure of slack on the product market. Um, and what you can see that's very interesting is that in recession, um, the rate of idleness goes up. And so you can see here a little bit. So you have a first increase just post 2000 at the dot com recession. And then you have a big increase in 2009. That's a great uh, recession. And so you can see where the rate of idleness went up all the way to 30%. So you can see that in recession, slack is a much bigger problem. Uh, there is much more of the capacity, production capacity of firms in manufacturing um, that, uh, that's idle. Okay, so all the way to 30%. And as a benchmark, we've also plotted the unemployment rate in the US, and that's the green line at the bottom. And what you can see is that... Uh, Unemployment, which measures slack on the labor market, is 
you know, much smaller problem quantitatively that the rate of unemployment in that period is always between like 5 and 10 percent. The rate of idleness is between 10 and 30 percent. So there is much more labor that's idle in firms that outside of firms, you know, in the labor market. So this is a big, this is a big deal. This is a big, important uh, phenomenon. Uh, so you have manufacturing that was a black line and then you have a blue solid line that represents um, non-manufacturing or service firms. Um, and here you have data that start only in 2000. But nevertheless, the data are quite similar. So you can see that um, the rate of idleness in service firms is always between 10 and 20 percent. And you do see an increase, although it's less marked uh, during the Great Recession, where it goes up all the way to, uh, to 20 percent. So this big increase here is a Great Recession. Um, so again, this uh, rate of idleness is way, way higher uh, than the unemployment rate. So this is really a real thing that's going on, that firms have labor and capital, they could produce because they have no customers, they are not able to produce um, or sell. And just so you have the number in, in mind, so what is the average rate in idleness in a manufacturing over the period, that's 17.3%. Uh, that's for manufacturing firm, that's the average. And what is the average rate of idleness for service firms? It's a little bit less, it's 14.8%. Just as a reference. So here we're talking about numbers that are much larger than the average unemployment rate. So um, now just kind of as a side uh, little discussion, I want to show you another measure of slack that is um, often talked about in macro that's computed by um, the Federal Reserve. So here we have it, and that's also available uh, on the FRED uh, website. Uh, so that's computed by the uh, the Board of Governors of the Fed. Um, this is a, a rate of capacity utilization. And so this is, uh, so it's something that's more narrow than the rate of idleness that, we, that I've showed you that's produced by, by this ISM. So it's more narrow for two reasons. Uh, so this capacity utilization uh, so first reason is that this applies only to industrial firms. So it's not going to uh, include any of the service firms, so it's, a more, it's more narrow. And secondly, this concept is a bit less close to the concept of Slack. And in particular, it's less close to the concept of Slack that we have in our model because this is... Um, this is uh, saying the share of the total maximum productive capacity of a firm that's actually used. And that's taking capital as given, but allowing labor uh, you know, to be adjusted to use capital to the max. So this is just saying, you know, if firms just take their capital as given but are allowed to hire more workers if they need, how much more could they produce? Um, so it's a little bit less of a, you know, there is a, a, a link that's less direct between this measure and what we have in our models. Nevertheless, because pe people talk about it, it's important to know that this, uh, this measure is there. Um, and what you can see, you know, taken, taking a step back, is that the properties of this measure of uh, idleness or utilization are very similar to the properties of the measures that I showed you that um, come out of the ISM. Um, so what are these properties? So first of all, what we can see is that there is always, there is always some, some slack even if we use this measure of capacity utilization because capacity utilization is always less than 100%. Um, and in fact, if you take an average here 
of what is the capacity utilization rate over the entire sample. Uh, you know, you would get something around here. So you'd get an average around 80%. That's the average capacity utilization rate, which means that the, the, the rate of idleness here is about 20% on average, uh, so it's quite significant. The other thing that's interesting, of course, is that um, the rate of idleness increases a lot in recession, or if you want, the rate of utilization drops a lot in recession. And so you can see it here, um, that during the COVID recession, where um, you know utilization was only 65%, so idleness was around 35%. Uh, you can see it at the at the end of the Great Recession here, where again, uh, you know, idleness was more than 30 percent. Uh, you can see it in the Volcker disinflation here, where idleness was again close to 30 percent, a little bit less, uh, because utilization was around 70 percent. So. Uh, you can see that the utilization is very procyclical. It's uh, high in good times and low in bad times. So the idleness is very countercyclical, much like the unemployment rate. Um, these properties are properties we saw also with the ISM measure. Um,